Chapter 10 of the Computer Science 311 for 17 workbook is on data clustering using graphs. Um, so this chapter is just an application of graph theory um, that's very relevant today. So classification and clustering are two of the processes very commonly used in data analytics. And I'm gonna show you an example of a problem that might relate to things such as indicated here, trying to compare data, trying to compare athletes' performance, uh, rec recommendation systems for products, um, trying to determine similar movies. All of these relate to the idea of clustering data. And we're, uh, we're gonna look at data clustering using undirected graphs and show you why linear algebra actually is still very important. And there's a strong tie between linear algebra, which you took in Math 251, and, um, and graph theory. So as the example in the chapter, uh, the working example I came up with is, suppose we have this undirected graph and we have seven vertices, and I'm just gonna indicate the vertices by the, 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 the integers one through seven. And let's suppose this is the edge set. So this is an undirected graph. So again, we use curly brackets for the edges. Suppose that the edges are there and we're just going to go ahead and draw the graph as indicated by these edges. Um, so the first thing we'll do is we'll just go ahead and uh, we'll label the, the vertices as the edges come up. So we'll actually see sort of how we should place the graph based on how the edges occur. So there's an edge between one and six. So we'll just go ahead and start and draw those vertices as opposed to just lining up one, two, three, four, five, six. Sometimes it's better just to look at what edges you really have. And the next edge we have is a four, a one to four edge. So we'll go ahead and put that vertex in and then draw that edge in. And then the next one we have is four to six and you can see we have a K3. So we have a K3 um, subgraph immediately. Uh, continuing on, uh, there's an edge from two to four. So let's put two to here and there's two to four and keep going two to five. So there must be a new vertex five and we'll add that edge in. And then continuing on, uh, there's an edge between um, two and seven. So there's supposed to be another vertex. Seven comes in and there's an edge between two and seven. And then between five and seven, there's an edge and three comes in. So there's another vertex three up here, all right? And there's an edge between three and five and there's an edge between three and seven. Um, so we can actually see here we have uh, two K3 subgraphs, here we have another one, okay? So there's a total of three. Um, and the idea here is, again, how can we cluster the data based on relationships or maybe these edges re uh, relate to similarities and so forth, okay? And uh, if we turn to the next page, um, the technique we're using here is based on what's called the Laplacian matrix and so to cluster this graph in other words to try to illustrate you know how many clusters are represented by that data is what we're trying to um, get at um, you actually use eigenvectors which was covered in math 251 and we use the eigenvector of a very special matrix called the laplacian matrix um, that's associated with the graph g all right and here's how the Laplacian is constructed. To obtain the Laplacian, first you need the adjacency matrix. So we already know what the adjacency matrix is. Remember, this is a binary matrix for an undirected graph, where as you indicate the vertices uh, going down rows and columns, then you pretty much put edges in where they're appropriate, all right? And, um, and again, in this case, if we were just going back to review a little bit, this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on the rows going down from vertices one through seven. And then we do the same thing going across the rows. And it's just a double check to make sure that we are consistently um, defining this matrix appropriately. So if you went down the first row here, this would suggest there should be um, uh, an edge between um, one and four. So I'll just quickly, just for the sake of um, identification, let me just quickly sketch the graph again over here, just a smaller version of it, so that we can see there's that K3, and then there's a connection to two, and then we have all these other vertices coming in, five, seven, and three is over here, and it's connected that way. So again, as we come down, one is connected to four, that is correct, one is connected to six, that is correct. So 
Again, you see those two edges there. And you know, all the way down here, seven is connected to two, that is correct. Seven is connected to um, three, that is correct. And seven is connected to five. So number, notice this, the number of ones, or non-zeros, the number of, of ones that you have in a row correspond to the degree of that vertex. So again, the degree of seven is equal to three, and that's how many ones you have in that row, okay? Right, so that is the adjacency matrix um, for this graph. And sometimes people might just have their data in a matrix form. Uh, again, this could have been you know, relationships, it could be similarities, it could be what products were bought by certain people, things like that. And you could either look at it as a graph or you could look at it as this adjacency matrix, right? The next step is to create what's called the diagonal matrix D um, such that um, the, uh, that should be D sub I I, so I'll correct that in the notes. So that's the, the diagonal element, D sub I I, um, is equivalent to the ith row sum of A, all right? So what we do here is we go across here and count, basically, since it's a binary matrix, just count the number of ones. There are two on the first row, so we put a two in that diagonal position, three, and again, another way to look at it is these are the degrees of other vertices as you scan through all of those vertices in the graph. We just show that the degree of seven is three, right? The degree of six is two, right? Because there's only two edges coming out of six, right? So we can see that information coming down the diagonal there. And finally, the Laplacian is just taking this matrix and subtracting the adjacency matrix from it, or by this simple formula, L, the Laplacian matrix, L is D minus A. So if you take this matrix and subtract A from it, then you'll get this matrix. Oh, also notice that the diagonal of the adjacency matrix is always going to be zero because we're not looking at, we're typically, you're not looking at loops, all right, loop free. So as long as it's loop free, there'll be zeros. So what we'll see down the diagonal is that diagonal D matrix. And then of course, all these edge, uh, these ones that indicate edges are now negative numbers, okay, off the diagonal, right? So this is the Laplacian matrix L, which we need to do this data clustering with. And we'll go on and then flip the page um, and look at how we use it. So uh, assign, uh, uh, computer scientist Miroslav Fiedler, <clears throat> actually he's more of a mathematician, I should say, discovered that um, there's a very good use of eigenvectors of that uh, Laplacian matrix, and the importance of, this, of the eigenvector corresponding to the smallest, second smallest eigenvalue of the Laplacian can be used for data clustering, okay? So, and remember from linear algebra to math 251 class, an eigenvector uh, or characteristic vector of a linear transformation or matrix is a non-zero vector that changes only by a scalar value when that transformation is applied to it. You may have seen things like this, ax equals lambda x, or in our case, we're looking at the special eigenvector such that L times that eigenvector is some eigenvalue, that's a scalar value times lambda i. So that's when you look at eigenvalues and eigenvectors in linear algebra, this is typically what we're doing mathematically is we're finding a vector such that when L acts on it, it's the same thing as if you just scaled that vector by a certain value. If you change all the values by a certain uh, a scalar value. Fiedler proved that the second one, because you can order the eigenvalues, so we're, so we're looking at the second largest eigenvalue. Um, so prove that the eigenvector corresponding to that second largest eigenvalue, called V2, can be used to partition the graph into maximally interconnected. That means they're, co they're, they're very cohesive, so they're very much more related within the cluster than outside the cluster, all right? And they're mini minimally interconnected between the clusters. So we're trying to get maximum separation and homogeneity, homogeneity within the cluster. So it's like we're trying to cluster the data so that the data inside a cluster is very much related, but very different from data in another cluster. So that's what that means. This special vector V2 is called the Fiedler vector, right? Again, it's the second, uh, it's the eigenvector corresponding to the second largest eigenvalues, all right? 
So um, if you compute the figure, uh, and I've got a code on the next page, if you actually computed the Fiedler vector for that Laplacian matrix that we have from the original graph, this is the values that would come back. It'll be real, and it's going to have plus and minus values to it. And what Fiedler showed is that you can actually use the elements of this vector to decide how to cluster your data. The vertices of G correspond to the elements V2 that have the same sign are placed in the same cluster. So what happens here is these elements that are all positive get put in one cluster and they match up with the uh, indexing of the vertices. So what that means is if we looked at the vertices, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, what the feeder vector is saying is that you ought to put two, three, five, and seven in one cluster, and then the rest of them, which would be in this case one, the ones that are negative, one, four, and six should be in another cluster, right? All right. Um, so if we go back to the original graph uh, that we drew earlier, again, I'll just draw it here so we can see again. So what the Fiedler vector is saying, this was the original graph, two, five, seven, and three. And I'm gonna put the edges back in. Of course, you don't have to redraw these. I'm just doing it so I keep it on the same slide here. Draw in those K3s that we had before. So what the Fiedler vector is saying is that one, four, and six should be in a cluster and two, five, seven. So here's the cut. So that's the separation of the clusters. It's saying that what you really have are two clusters. Here's one of them and here's the other. And another way to look at it is that it is sort of related to our min cut process that we talked about before. And I found a way of cutting it so that roughly the size of the two subsets of vertices are about the same. Now they can't be equal because I have seven, right? But I've got three on one side and four on the other. And this, is, this technique was the great thing about it, it's very automatic, easy to compute, and you construct the Laplacian, you get this Fiedler vector, and it makes the cut for you, right? Um, on the next page, I actually showed you, I actually have a code here that I, I uh, wrote up for it, um, just to sort of illustrate it in Python. Um, this is a Python 3 script that would compute it. Um, to do this, though, you would have to have the NumPy uh, library routine eig, so uh, that computes eigenvalues. But what I've done is uh, using Python, and if you take Computer Science 270, uh, we will go through lots of Zybook activities on getting you up to speed on Python if you're not already there. Um, and then we use an array um, data type to input, um, this case, the Laplacian. I went ahead and just, I didn't, input the, uh, create the adjacency. I just went ahead and put in the Laplacian matrix. And then this is how you call the eigenvalue function and you get the vectors out and the values out. And what I'm doing is just printing the elements of the uh, second smallest vector out. Um, so uh, in, in the it index, another thing about Python, it indexes on zero. So the second, um, uh, so the second vector will be indexed one rather than zero uh, coming out of this uh, 2 d array structure. So that's the second column as opposed to the first. So that's just uh, an illustration of, of how, you know, the tie between linear algebra and graph theory plays a very important role, especially in data analytics. And it's, uh, it's one reason why we want you to have exposure to both linear algebra from your mathematical uh, studies as well as you know, the introduction of graph theory that you've gotten by this course.